Jonas. A play for radio by J.C.W. Brooke. With Prunella Scales, John Rye, Anna Cropper, Julian Holloway and David March. Jonas. Thanks, and the rest are mine. I'll get a rough and discard on that diamond. <sighs> Thanks, Pat. Call the remaining trumps. Make the ace king of spades and rough up. Four hearts, bid and make. Well done, darling, gay man, rubber. If you don't need that diamond, he must lose a spade. I know that now, darling, but I didn't then. Well, you could have worked it out. You knew I hadn't a doubleton because it didn't I make that the round thousand. I must have had three. With the three in dummy, the five in your hand, he can't have had more than two. Well, I thought you might be short and could over trump. How many times have I told you I always Peter with a doubleton? I'm sorry, darling. I forgive you. Oh, what's the damage? Uh, 30p. That's right. Who's some more coffee, darling? Please. Hugo? Mm, thanks. Pat? Please, do you want a hand? Oh, no, it's okay. Won't take a minute. It's already percolated. Shouldn't take long. You stay here. Well, good rubber. <laughs> For you, yeah. You had a couple of game calls. And each time you opened that suit, that destroyed our tempo. And you were holding all the trumps and we were in four spades. Well, that's luck. There's no such thing as luck. It's all chance. Same thing? Not at all. If you took all the hands I've ever held, I wouldn't mind betting they'd even out at a flat ten points each with a square distribution. Same for you, same for Pat, and the same for Julie. Even though she's got the reputation of being a lucky player. Have I? Yes. Well, you always seem to get the cards when it matters. Oh, now, that's my psychic power. I sometimes know that things will work. I knew, for instance, that we'd make four hearts on the last hand. Mm, not against best defence. It looked uh, right, it felt right. And boy golly, it was right. Yeah, <laughs> only, only against bad defence. Hugo, I've said I'm sorry. Well, I believe in luck. Personally, for straightforward rubber bridge, I prefer to partner a lucky player, a lucky bad player, than an unlucky good one. Any fool can make a cast iron contract, but only lucky fools keep picking them up. Well, I don't believe in luck. I don't believe any of those fancy things that go bump in the night. Ghouls, poltergeist, ghosts, luck, God. Careful, Hugo. Your atheistic streak is showing again. Well, sure, you don't believe in God, Max. Max will believe in anything to get an argument going, won't you, darling? <laughs> well, I must admit that I can usually see both sides of a question. <laughs> Yeah, we used to call him, uh, what was it? Max the... What was it, darling? Sorry? What was it we used to call Max at school? Because he'd always argue on both oh. sides at once. Max the... Trimmer. What's his name who taught us history? Well, Father Gill. Oh, yes, him. He called Max the Trimmer. That's right. After the Earl of Shaftesbury, I think, during the Wars of the Roses. Or was it the Civil War? Anyway, he always came down on the weaker side to trim things up again. Max used to do that during debates. <laughs> so I did. What a good memory you've got. Oh, God, dear. It must be all of 14 years. God, that makes me feel old. I'm oh. sorry, Julie. It must be very boring for you. What? Hearing about Max's part? Yes. Well, she wouldn't talk about me as if I wasn't here. It's the only way to keep you out of a conversation. Thank you. <laughs> Darling, uh, haven't we been... Better start thinking. Oh, about... no, no, you're not going yet. I've just early. put the coffee on. We've plenty of time for another rubber. I told Sally we'd be late. Yes, I know, but uh, don't you want to go on playing, Pat? Well. Oh, not... come on, darling. We must get our own back. Well, I'd rather not. I mean. Are you all right, love? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I just don't want to play bridge for a while, thanks. Well, one more rubber at least. I'd much rather not. That coffee ready, darling? Of course. I'll get it. I picked up an interesting bit of junk the other day. Oh. Yeah. I'll show it to you. Yeah. Careful. Where are you off to? To get the, um, you know, what I picked up yesterday. Oh, that. He's never happier than when he's poking about in some dusty old junk shop. Oh, don't mean know it. What is it this time? Oh, one of those things, you know, with letters round the outside. It tells your fortune or something. Oh, and the Ouija board. Well, that's right. You put a glass in the middle to trap the spirit, and it moves about to spell out messages. You have to put your fingers on top, then. That's a load of old rubbish. He spent most of yesterday polishing it up. He's thinking of hanging it on that wall over there. It's about the only thing you can do oh, with help it. Help yourself, cream and sugar. Thanks. Here we are. There. What do you think? Victorian? Hmm. Well, you're the expert. Have you looked it up? Well, I've tried to, but there's nothing remotely like it in any of the books. No. They all say it was an Edwardian craze, but this looks much older. It's mm. really beautiful. Was there a glass with it? <laughs> For trapping the spirit? No. Hmm. It's interesting woods it's made of. Uh, what's this? Oak? 
Uh, mahogany, I think, and the other letters are ebony, I'm almost sure. The base seems to be sandalwood. What's that stain there? <laughs> Tea, expect. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's sunk deep there, under the polish. Mm. This round the edge, it, it's not familiar. It should be you, Pess. What? I mean, to hold the spirit, it should be you, Pess. It's poisonous. Uh, at college, we used to talk about things like this. We made one with letters on bits of paper, you know. Um, one of the girls got quite interested, read books about it. Well, that's how I know it should be you, Pass, to be a proper one. OK, I'll certainly find out. I was thinking of hanging it on the wall over there. Sort of conversation piece. We could tell people that at the dead of night we receive messages from above. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than wife swapping. Speak for yourself. Thank you. Any time. Why don't you suggest we use it? What? Oh, come on, darling. You know you've been dying to see if anything would happen. He's been just like a kid with a new toy. Is it that obvious? Well, anyway, how about it? Should we give it a go? Oh, you're joking. Well, you never know. Might be fun. What about you, Pat? No, she's tired. She doesn't want to. No, I don't mind. But nothing ever happened at college. Ah, now, that's because you didn't have the right gear. But with this board, who knows? Come on, Hugo. Say you'll give it half an hour just to see what happens. Well, I'd much rather have another rubber. You can record, darling. Write down what it says. Well, you don't want to bother with this, do you, Judy? I'll get no peace if we don't. <laughs> Ever since yesterday, he's been dying to see if it works. You're too right, I have. Well, you never know. It might give us the winner of the national or something. Well, things like this intrigue me. I suppose it's the old fascination of having a chance of a glimpse into the future. Anyway, let's take a vote and abide by the majority. Oh. All those in favour of giving my Ouija board a go, lift your hand. Yes, let's have a go. <laughs> and all those against can record. Now, Hugo. That was a waste of time. Well, we'll give it half an hour, and then if it doesn't work, we'll go back to bridge, OK? Darling, get a wine glass or something, will you? What's it said so far? Nothing. Meaningless string of letters. Let's play bridge. Half an hour is half an hour. We should relax, close our eyes. I thought we were meant to concentrate on what we want answered. Well, that's later, after after something's there. Oh, for God's sake, you make it sound as if something was actually going to happen. Well, how long have we been trying now? Twenty minutes. Look, let's swap round, change our seat, and oh. you come in too, Hugo. Give it one last try. No, not me. Oh, please, darling, force the right number. Well, who's going to record? <laughs> Not that there'll be anything to record. I'll do it with my free hand. Now, come on, we must have everyone in on this. If we do get the winner of the National, then you're not allowed to bet if you don't participate. It's a waste of time. Please, darling. Oh, well. Ah, ten minutes, then, no more. Then we'll play bridge, all right? Fair enough. Right. And turn off the middle light, will you? We might as well get the right atmosphere. Anything yet? Nothing that makes sense. And there won't be. We're wasting time. Five minutes more. Try asking it something. That might get it going. It's going. It's just not making any sense. I'm going to see what happens. <laughs> Stupid. I feel embarrassed at addressing the empty air. You pretend you're on television. Oh, very funny. Is anyone there? It's moving more positively. What does it say? I. A. M. I am. Oh, someone's mucking about. Not me. Not me. Ask something quick before it goes. Well, what do I ask it? I don't know. It's nothing. Oh, you ask something, Pat. No, don't be stupid. We've waited half an hour. The least we can do is ask it something. Oh, go on, Pat. Who... Who are you? M... E... Oh, obvious when you think about it. <laughs> In more ways than you one. You quiet. What is your name? J... Oh. oh, look, this is too much. Someone's mucking about. Darling, please. Look, put your finger back, Hugo. What, so you can go on making your joke? Not bloody likely. Please. Oh, all right. I'll let him have his fun. There. Go on, Pat. Ask it again. What is your name? It's gone dead. <laughs> it's more like Max has run out of ideas. Let's play bridge. I've not done anything. It's moving again. Invention coming back, is it not? It's not me. Quiet. Have you anything to tell us? My name is Max, and I'm making a joke. O N E O F. Write it down, Max. U W I L D I 
E T H I S W E K It's gone dead. What did it say? Did it say something? Well, you see, um, the trouble is there's no indication when one word stops and the next begins. On E F W. No, that's not right. Here, let me see. Here you are. Switch on the light, darling. Of course. The coffee's got cold. Anyone want another cup? Have you worked it out, darling? Yes. I've worked it out. If you ask me, it's in bloody bad taste, Max. I did nothing. What did it say? I know damn well. well. What does it say? It'll upset Pat. It's the sort of thing that does. Oh, come on, I did nothing. What does it say? Yes, darling, what is it? Just a joke in bad taste, nothing more. Well, tell us. Nothing, nothing. Please. All right. No, I think Max should own up. It was all a joke. Not a particularly funny one, either. I own up to nothing. What does it say? Well, look for yourself, as if you didn't know. One of you? Yes, you. The letter U, meaning Y-O-U. Ah, a spirit that knows shorthand. I wonder if his name's Pitman. Oh, come on, <laughs> darling. Read out the rest. One of you will? Bad spelling. One of you will... No, you're right. It is in bad taste. Um, but I didn't do it. Well, who else could it have been? Oh, for God's sake, what does it say? Here, see for yourself. One of you will die this week. Oh, no. Look, it's all right, darling. It was only a joke. A joke? Who, who would play a joke like that? Oh, darling, it's all right. Look, oh, now, Max, for God's sake. But I, I think you should apologise, darling. I think you should apologise for playing such a stupid joke. Oh. Yeah, all, all right, I, I, I can see it backfired. I'm sorry, Pat. It, it just seemed funny at the time. Yes, well, you might have known it. I, I just so. didn't think, that's all. Well, you were all sitting around waiting for something to happen, and my Ouija board didn't seem to be helping, so I thought, why not? The judicious shove here and there, and bingo, a message. I just said the very first thing that came into my head. Look, I'm very sorry if it upset you, Pat. It's all right. Very sorry. But I was so annoyed at Hugo scoffing at my nice Ouija board, so I thought I'd show him. There, darling, you see? It's just the little stupid thing he would do. Now, you, you all right now? Yes, thank you. It was a bit of a shock, that's all. A bit of a shock. Of course. <laughs> it, it really was you fooling, wasn't it, Max? Yes, it really was me fooling, and I'm um, very sorry. Yeah, and so you should be. Anyway, the half hour's up, nothing happened. So... What about another rubber? Bye. 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 I'll call you tomorrow, Pat. Thanks for the evening. Yes, thanks for the evening. Bye. Bye bye. bye. And thank you, darling. Me? For one little white lie. <laughs> oh, yes. With you looking such daggers at me, what else could I do? Come on, let's go back in. I'm cold. Nightcap? Oh, thanks. Just a small one. I wasn't really looking daggers at you, darling. At the time, I half thought it might have been you. It was only after I'd had a chance to think I realised your taste isn't quite as bad as that. Thanks. Well, I must admit, I was toying with the idea of making it ask, which one of you has been eating garlic? <laughs> My name is Dracula, and I like it. <laughs> but it started moving before I got on the way. <laughs> Here. Thanks. <sighs> what do you think caused it, darling? Well, I've been thinking about that. It seems to me there's three possible answers. First, it was one of us fooling about. Not likely. It wasn't you. I didn't. I don't think Hugo has the imagination. No, don't underestimate him, darling. But you think it might have been him? No, he's too fond of Pat. But he's not such a plodder of a thinker as you might suggest. All right, say so it wasn't him, for whatever reason. It couldn't have been Pat. Well, why do you say that? Oh, you saw her. She was the only one of us getting really involved. I, I don't think it would have occurred to her to... Cheat? Exactly. She would have thought it would have been dishonest. All right. So it wasn't Pat, Hugo, you, or me, which disposes of my first explanation. Secondly, for... it could have been random. On the principle of the million monkeys and the works of Shakespeare? Well, given time. No, I don't think so. No, it answered the questions. It was too neat. And it was trying to spell a name when Hugo took his hand off the glass. J-O. John, I suppose. Well, it's common enough. Anyway, if it wasn't random, 
That brings us to my third reason. Don't tell me I know. It's what all this has been leading up to. Why we're both worried. Your third reason is that it was genuine, that we trapped a spirit. And that the spirit warned us that one of us only has a week to live. We'll die this week. Might mean tomorrow. Oh, lucky it's Sunday. It gives us a few days' grace. Don't joke about it, darling. Well, how else are we going to look at it? We'll never know. Even if one of us does pop off, we'll never know if it was anything more than a coincidence. Unless, of course... What? Well, there could be another reason. One much more in keeping with modern thought. Well, go on. Well, as you know, I'm no psychiatrist. But suppose one of us was guiding that glass subconsciously, spelling out a message, a, a wish even. A wish? Oh, why not? Let's stretch our minds a little. Let's suppose one of us wants to murder. <laughs> what? No, hear me out. It's only pure hypothesis, after all. Um, yeah, suppose I was having an affair with Angela. Your secretary? Well, she's an attractive girl. In fact, I really quite fancy her, as I think I've mentioned before. Several times. <laughs> Some jealousy showing, darling. Anyway, supposing this affair was more than just an affair, it was a lifelong passion. I want, more than anything else in the world, to live with her. What? Leave me? Oh, no, no, no. No, I'd need to get rid of you, of course. So I plan to murder you next week. Oh, thanks very much. But at the same time, a residue of guilt remains in my mind. Well, that is a bit of a mean way to say thanks for seven years of reasonably happy marriage. Reasonably All happy? Right. Perfectly happy. I'm not arguing. The point being that I think it's a pity to bump you off, so I give you a warning, subconsciously, anonymously. I tell you to watch out, but in such a manner that it's unlikely you'll believe it. And even if you did... You wouldn't know it was from me. That way I assuage my guilt somewhat, and at the same time you won't be on the lookout for the untraceable poison I'm going to shove in your coffee. Charming. But it started to spell out a name, J-O, not M-A. Have you forgotten, Inspector, that my full name is Jonathan Maxwell Brown? Oh. <laughs> now, given the basic premise, darling, even what I'm saying now fits in. I tell you the truth, assuaging my guilt still further, but wrap it up in such a manner that you're not going to believe a word I've been saying. You're not, are you? What? No. Oh. oh, it's stupid, you and your hypotheses. Oh, shouldn't it be hypothesized? I wish you'd never bought that board. We should have taken Hugo's advice and had another rubber. You believe we trapped a ghost? I don't know what to believe. Well, nor do I. But it's getting through to you, isn't it? What is? That it might all be genuine. That one of us, for some reason or other, is due to die this week. Don't! Well, there's plenty of ways of dying. Car crash, train smash, falling off a bridge. Don't! Even if we locked ourselves indoors, the house might burn oh, down. Darling, please. All right. I'll stop stating the obvious. But your safe, cosy little world has been threatened and you don't like it. Who would? Well, who would indeed? Life is very precarious, darling. Sometimes you realise it, and it's a bit of a shock. Yes, it is. And I'll tell you who else realises it as well. Pat? Yeah. Well, she's sensitive. She'll be upset, unless she's fully swallowed my little white lie, which I think improbable. There's all that business about her brother. Oh? I didn't know she had a brother? Well, she hasn't. Not now. It's a thing we all try to forget. I had, or I don't think I would have suggested that we use the Ouija board. Now, it happened during the summer after A-levels... There was a group of us who used to go about together. Myself, Pat, Hugo, a couple of girls, and, and John, Pat's brother. John was different. He wanted to be a poet. Well, he certainly looked the part. Pale, fragile, intense, shy, you know. <laughs> he sort of tailed along after us, and we put up with him because he was Pat's brother. Anyway, he died, but, uh, was killed. We were all going to a party at a friend's house. John said he would be there, but he didn't turn up. We found out later that a car had run out of control and crushed him against a lamppost. Oh, how awful. Yeah. Well, the point was, Pat knew, uh, before she had been told, that is. She knew? Yeah. Quite early in the evening, when we were dancing, she suddenly screamed, clasped her chest, went white and collapsed to the floor. Now, I was with her at the time. And so was Hugo. We, we didn't know what it was. Some sort of fit, we thought. But when she came round, all she could say was, John. Poor John. Nothing else. We wanted to take her home, but she wouldn't go. So we put her to bed. No, no, Hugo stayed with her. There was always a tacit understanding between them. We didn't find out what had happened until the next morning. Poor Pat. Yeah. Well, she went to college, but 
but she had a nervous breakdown in her first term. She wasn't cut out for teaching anyhow. She was too highly strung. Most of the rest of us were at university or college. Not Hugo, though. He had to take over the business when his father died. They married before Easter. He had to practically look after her like a nurse for the first few months, I understand. But then he's good like that. Yes. I've noticed he's very protective. Well, he's just right for her. You want another? Yes, please. John starts with J.O. I wondered how long it would take you to spot that. Why do you think Hugo took his finger off the glass? He had the same idea. Oh, thanks. I'm only surprised he let the whole thing go on. He must have thought it was me and banked on me not having such bad taste. But it wasn't you. No. But Hugo has to think so. He can't allow himself to consider anything else. But Pat will. She'll have thought it over and come to the same conclusions as us. Yes, knowing her, I should think she's going to lose some sleep tonight. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to startle you. It's all right. I'm, I'm looking, looking for those sleeping pills. Oh, but you haven't needed them for years. You go back to bed, darling. I'll be all right. If I can't find them, I'll make myself a drink and read a book or something. I'll be all right. It's that stupid joke Max played, isn't no, it? No, no. I just feel restless, that's all. Too much coffee, you see. You know I never sleep well after too much coffee. It's the caffeine, you see. The caffeine keeps me awake. But you go back to bed, darling. You go back to bed. I'll be all right. Oh, it was only a joke, darling. He admitted it. I know it was a stupid thing to do, but, well, he admitted it. You come back to bed. I'll be all right. Now, you come here, love. Come <clears throat> here. Oh, darling. You're freezing. J.O., it might have been John. It might not have been a joke. It might have been John. You silly girl. It was Max fooling. But it might not have been... <laughs> now, lovey, lovey <laughs> listen. It was Max, that's all. Max playing a stupid joke. John is... Dead, but... but... Yes, and it's all in the past, a long <laughs> time ago. Max must have forgotten. He must have done. <laughs> but... No buts. Now, listen. Put all those stupid ideas out of your head and get back into bed. Switch on the blanket and then get warm. I'll find your pills and make a cup of cocoa and bring it up to you, OK? OK? I'm sorry, darling, I just... I know, lovey, I know. But don't worry, everything's all right. Now, you get back into bed. Now, go on, off you go. Go on. I don't want to stand about here all night, even if you do, young woman. OK. Thanks, darling. Well, the best thanks you can give me is to stop these silly thoughts in that silly little head of yours. I'll try. Good. Now, off you go to bed. She couldn't get off to sleep last night. I had to find those sleeping pills for her. Max, I'm very angry about that stupid joke. You could have put it back ten years. What the hell do you think you were playing at? Look, I really... Well, for God's sake, man. You, of all people, should know what she could be like about such things. Look, is this why you phoned me at work? To meet you here so you could give me a carpeting? Well, of course it was. If you'd seen her last night, you groping go. about in the dark... You go. ...crying... Look, I didn't bloody do it. Nor did Julie. Of course you did it. You said yourself you did it. Only because I realised how upset Pat would get if I didn't. Yeah, but you no, said... No, you listen. I'm not a stupid man. I hadn't been drinking last night. I didn't play that stupid joke, if it was a joke. What do you mean, if it was a joke? Of course it was a joke. Have you thought of the alternatives? There aren't any alternatives. Glasses don't go round spelling out messages unless someone's fooling about. Look, I know you're trying to protect you Pat, but... You've been making sandwiches, yes. are you? There you Thanks. are, love. Right, who's next? Look, let's get another drink. Get some food inside us and then go through this thing rationally, shall we? Hello? Dolly, is me. Have you found Pat yet? No, not yet. Ah, good. Because uh, I've just had lunch with Hugo and he was wondering if you'd go round there this afternoon. Apparently they had a bad night last night. He's rather worried about it. Yes, of course him. I'll go, but well, does he still think it's one of your jokes? I don't know. He's pretty angry about the whole thing, but I calmed him down. We decided in the end that the best thing is to convince Pat it was all my fault. She'll worry herself silly otherwise. Are you sure? Yes, of course I'm sure. Look, believe me, darling, it's the best thing. Oh, all right, I'll do it. Look, I must go now. There's someone at the door. All right, I'll see you this evening. Oh, oh by the way, I might be a bit late tonight. There's a contract needing attention. Well, can't you bring it home? No, there's one thing I don't intend to start. I'll be in about seven or eight. All I right, all right. I must rush now, darling. Bye. Bye, love. Come 
Yes. Mrs. Brown. Yes. My name is Mohammed Asif. Is Mr. Brown in, please? No, I'm afraid he isn't. Ah, oh, that is a pity. I have some business I wish to discuss with him concerning an item he purchased last week, an Ouija board. My husband did purchase one. Then you have it. Tell me, are you familiar with its purpose? I don't understand. Some people would regard it as no more than an objet d'art to hang on the wall. Others might try to use it to contact the spiritual forces, perhaps even as a party game. Have you and your husband done so? Why? Ah, I can see you have pity. And it spelled out something unpleasant? I think you'd better come in, Mr... Asif, thank you. In here, this way. Thank you. My card. Muhammad Asif, mystic and fortune teller. I will explain. But first, may I see the board? It's here. Ah. It has been a long time. It is very beautiful. Uh, yes. We were going to hang it on the wall over there. I uh, see. Uh, Mrs. Brown, uh, my information is that your husband paid ten pounds for it. I will give you fifty. Fifty pounds? I will also give him or you fifty pounds if you burn it. That is why I must have it. It must be destroyed. I have the money here. I... I don't understand. No, I... allow me to explain. May I sit down? Oh, yes, of Thank course, you. yes. It is a long tale. As you may have gathered, I know that board of old. It was made by my father's grandfather. Oh, dear. Um, excuse me a moment. Of course. Hello? Julie? Pat here? Oh, Pat, I, I was just about to ring you. Um, hang on a moment. Excuse me, Mr. Arcee. Certainly. Sorry, I, I have a visitor. Oh, sorry. I just thought I'd call you. Thank you for last night. Oh, thanks. Uh, I was thinking of coming round, as a matter of fact. You're worried, too. Worried? About what happened? Oh, no, no, no. Um, I, I've got to go into town anyway, so I, I thought I'd drop in. Must have forgotten. Uh, look, I'll be along in half an hour or so, OK? I, I must go, as I've got this visitor. Yes, of course. OK. See you. Bye. So sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Arsley, but... <laughs> Where on earth has he got? What on... got back, he'd gone. He'd taken the board with him and left 50 pounds. Hugo, what am I going to do? I'm worried. Have you told Max? Well, he's out. I've tried. His secretary will know where he is. Well, she's out as well. Strange. Yes, but what am I going to do? Well, stop worrying about it for one thing. Uh, listen, are you going round to see Pat? Yes. Yes, well, whatever else you do, don't tell her about the board going. Convince her it was all a joke, Max's, or she'll have hysterics. Believe me, she will. Coming. Hello, Pat. Come in, I'll make a cup of tea. Lovely. <clears throat> well? What? Did you do all you had to do in town? Oh, it wasn't anything, really. Just a birthday present for Max. Oh, yes? Yes, a putting machine thing. You know, for his golf. Ah. Oh. It pings the ball back. Oh, yes. Won't be long. How are the kids? Since last night. Hmm? I mean, you asked me last night how they were. They haven't changed since then. Oh. They're fine. Oh, good. Look, Hugo asked you to come here, didn't he? He phoned you up and asked you to come here to make sure I'm all right. You haven't been to the shops. You haven't had time to go to the shops. Hugo got you to come here, didn't he? Well, he was worried about he you. He enjoys it. I don't... He understand. enjoys worrying about me. He likes to think of me being helpless. He likes to think I can't cope. He likes feeling noble and self-sacrificing. And... He's always trying to protect me, smooth things over. He's concerned about you. 
Yes, I know. I should be grateful, I know. But sometimes I feel smothered. I feel smothered now. I know Max played no joke. I've known Max all my life, almost, and I know he couldn't have played a joke like that, not after John. Did he tell you about my brother John? Did he tell you about him? Yes. What he didn't tell you was... What I don't expect he told you was, I mean... What did he tell you about that time? That when your brother... No, not about John. John's dead, dead. But what did he tell you about that time, about the three of us? Max, Hugo and me. What did he tell you about us? Nothing, really. Just that there was always a tacit understanding between you and Hugo. Never noticed me. It was always Max. Max? Max was the one I was with. Max, not Hugo. Oh, what? Max was the first boy I ever kissed. First boy I had real dreams about. The first boy I ever... It was always Max, never Hugo. Hugo never noticed me. I was strong, you see, independent. Didn't need him to lean on. I needed no one until John died. Then I needed Max, but Hugo came. Stayed with me all night. Hugo, not Max. Max hates dependence. You must have noticed. He hates illness. He treats people at face value. Hugo needs to be a knight. Hugo got to me. Married me when I was down and I needed someone. He married me. Max went away and met you. Met you at university. I came back and married Hugo. Oh, don't think I'm not grateful. God knows what I'd have done without him. But he's only happy when I'm dependent. When I've been pregnant. When I've had flu. When I've been depressed. When I've had to lean on him. Last night I leant on him and he was happy. Put me to bed. Brought me a drink. Treated me like an invalid. A sick child. Me. I have a great fear. What? That... Oh, just a minute. I'm afraid that Hugo did it. What? To upset me. Oh, Pat. To make me lean on him again. Nothing happened until he came to the table. I'm afraid that he guided the glass, made it spell out J-O to make me think of John, and then went on from there. I know it's ludicrous, but I have this fear. Well, the only other possibility is that it was all genuine, and that frightens me more, much, much more. Oh, Max, look, don't say it was a joke of Max's, please. I shall pretend to Hugo that I think it was a joke, but don't you tell me that, please. I've come to trust you, Julie. Well, at first I was jealous, and you had Max. But now I, I've, I've come to trust you. Thank you. Max didn't do it. I know. I knew all along. Uh... Do you want sugar? No, no, thanks. I'm dieting. He thought it was for the best. On your prompting. Me thought he did protest too much. Hmm? Well, Max always overdoes telling a lie. Goes on for too long. He tries to make it so convincing you're unconvinced and you begin to wonder. Or he might even tell you the truth and make you think he's telling a lie. Do you know his secretary? I don't think so. What's her name? Angela. Angela Thompson, I think. No, not by name, anyway. Why? Oh, oh, just changing the subject. Good afternoon, Forbes and Hobbs. Mr Brown, please. Oh, um, Mr Brown, I'm afraid he's not back yet. Oh, this is Mrs Brown here. I phoned earlier. Oh. Yes, of course, Mrs. Brown. Well, I want to get in contact with him rather badly. You still don't know where he is? I'm afraid not. Well, how about his secretary? Is she back yet? Um, no. She went off with Mr. Brown, as I said, just after he got back from lunch. Oh, um, she isn't on the phone, is she? Oh, um, no, I don't think she is, I'm afraid. <sighs> Thank you. Goodbye. I'm home, darling. Sorry to be so late. I'll get your supper. Good, I'm famished. How's Pat? Pretty worried. Sit down, I'll get it. Thanks. Were you with her long? Who 
went and picked up Jane from school. Andrew was away on a day trip. Here. Thanks. Oh, you've eaten? Yes. Hey, this looks good. It's a bit dried, I'm afraid. Oh, no, I said I'd be late. Not this late. Well, I'm sorry, love, but you know how it is. Did you stay at the office? No. I had to go to St Albans. Angela wasn't feeling too well. <laughs> Flew, if you ask me. So I ran her home and went on. You never mentioned St Albans on the phone? Well, it blew up just after I'd phoned you. One of those canny Scotsmen who demand the personal touch. <laughs> Pathological about being diddled by us Sassanacs. Did you? Well, far from it. I think he diddled me. <laughs> Still, it's all business. I tried to phone you, as a matter of fact. Did they tell you where I was? No. Said they didn't know. Oh, don't tell me. Sally. Sally? Yeah. A new girl on the switchboard and reception. Completely hopeless. Why Hobbs ever hired her is beyond me. Unless he's knocking her off, of course. Which, looking at his wife, is quite likely. <coughs> what did you want to speak to me about? About... No, 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 wait. First, I, I must apologise. What for? This isn't that bad. Well, no, not about the food. After what you said last night... Well, we've all been on edge and... Well, I've been sitting here thinking that you and Angela were... Having it off? <laughs> oh, I'm surprised at you, darling. Mind you, it would have been much more enjoyable than sitting half the afternoon and a good part of the evening on a very hard chair. And he didn't even offer me a cup of tea. Or a drop of the hard stuff. I'm sure Angela would have run to coffee, at least. Yes, well, I I'm sorry. I'm surprised you didn't come at me with the rolling pin. I know. I, I knew it was nothing, really, but after what happened, and then again this afternoon... So, I I'm not with you. Pat, do you mean? And partly, but... Well, do, do you remember when you phoned me, I mentioned there was someone at the door? Well, it was a an Indian called Mohammed Asif. Hmm? He asked for you, and then about the board. Well, he traced you from a junk shop. Well, I let him in, showed him the board, and... He offered me fifty pounds for it. Fifty pounds? Yes. He said it had to be burnt. Well, he was telling me why when Pat phoned, and I went to answer it, and when I came back in, he was gone. With the board. He left these. Good God. Did you run out and try to catch him? Yes, but he'd gone. Most odd. What did you do then? I tried to contact you, of course, but you'd gone, so I phoned Hugo. I had to tell someone. Well, what did he say? Well, he was mainly concerned I didn't tell Pat. Did you? No. Good. No, I don't think it would have helped. This, uh, Mohammed... Asif. Uh, Asif. Um, he didn't say where he was from. No, he was only here for a couple of minutes. And in that time, he convinced you he knew about the board? Yes, well, I got the impression that... What? That, that it's not the first time it's felt out something... unpleasant was the word he used. And you say he wanted to burn the board? Yes. He was about to tell me why when Pat rang. Oh, darling, what, what are we going to do? Oh, I don't know. We haven't got much to go well, on. Well, I thought afterwards that I should have gone to the police. They might have found him if I'd called them straight away. Yeah, well, they might. In any case, they'd have asked a lot of questions and it'd have got back to Pat. And, no, you were right to wait. But the only clear fact I can make out is that Pat's kept well out of it and should be kept out. Why? Why? Well, because I think she has a right to know. Do you? Well, keeping her in the dark like this is not fair. It's patronising. All right, so it's a bit patronising, but why should we tell her something that would upset her even more? Best thing is for her to believe it was all a joke on my part. Oh, she knows it wasn't. You told... Julie... Oh, she knew already. Oh, darling, she was in a bit of a state. So you went and told her it was no joke? She was getting into a state about being in the dark, about Hugo suffocating her, about their marriage, about lots of things. Oh, she needed to be able to rely on me. She knew you wouldn't play a joke like that. Well, she would have done if you'd stuck to your guns. She wouldn't. She knew... It wouldn't have mattered what I said. Max, she's... Oh, I don't She's know. what? She... She thinks everyone's turning against her. Turning against no, her? No, that's not what I mean. Well, what do you oh, mean? She's, Come I, on, what do you mean? I'm trying to tell you. She's not as helpless as Hugo makes her out to be. She has a great grasp of what's happening and she feels very frustrated because no one will discuss it with her rationally. They treat her like a child. A sick child were the words she used. Except you. To a certain extent, yes. So what you want me to do is get on the phone, ring up, hope Pat answers, and then say, Pat, did you know a mysterious Indian oh. called this afternoon and after hinting that the board has bought bad luck before, took it away for burning? She'd have hysterics. And to what end? No end. Darling, Pat is highly strung. When she gets worried, her health suffers alarmingly, and this makes her worry more, and she gets into a vicious circle. I told you it took Hugo months to get her over, John. 
If you or anyone tells her everything now, you'd put her back ten years. That I promise you. How can you be so sure? Since when did Hugo ever let her face things? Since when did Hugo not treat her like a child? How the hell do I know? I'm not married to her. I don't have any divine insight into their private lives. It's not up to us to meddle. Honestly, darling, do you think telling her about Asif is going to help? Particularly when she doesn't suspect anything of the kind. If she half knew, then maybe yes. But why worry her about something she knows nothing about? It'd be stupid. Then you agree, love? Yes, I, I suppose it would be. You see, you're seeing everything in black and white, darling. Like earlier, when you were concocting great love affairs between me and Angela. It never occurred to you that there was a perfectly reasonable explanation for it all. It did, but... Well, I didn't pay much heed, I must admit. Well, there you are, then. Any pud? Of course. I'll get it. But there's one thing we've forgotten, darling. Hmm? All this business of the Ouija board isn't in black and white. Nor is there any reasonable explanation. No, but then I don't expect there to be. Look, in a couple of weeks' time, when we're still all alive and Mr Asif hasn't mysteriously reappeared and we spent the 50 quid, we'll still be wondering what the hell it was all about. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. There's no suppose about it. Now, come on, where's me pud? <sighs> oh, it's time for bed. I'll get your pills. I don't think I'll need them tonight. Well, you won't sleep. No, I think I will. I feel better now. Julie was very kind. She listened. You know what you're like when you start worrying? She told me it wasn't a joke. You mean you tried to convince her it wasn't? Now, I'll get your no, pills. please, I don't want them. Well, you prefer to lie awake all night? Because that's what you'll do. You know you will. You go, listen. I know what's best. That's a good night's sleep. Now, you toddle off to bed like a good girl and I'll bring out some cocoa. Don't treat me like a child. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. But honestly, darling, you know perfectly well that you'll need a pill tonight. We usually have cocoa, don't we? I don't want a pill. Well, now you're being childish. Now, be reasonable. Think of I'll me. I'll sleep without one. You mean you're not worried about what happens? Yes, of course it's worrying me. And when you're worried, you can't sleep. You know that. After all, it's not as if the pills are powerful or anything. They just help you to get off nothing more. I just don't want one, that's all. Not now. Not right now. I want to see if I can get off without one, without a pill. I want to try. But darling, you're working yourself up into a state already. You're highly strung. Only because you insist on treating me as highly strung. If, 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 if you... Treated me as normal, and I wouldn't get like this. Oh, darling. No, please, no. I'm sorry, love. I know half of what I say isn't true, but I need to feel that something is left in my hands, something I can control, some decision I can make on my own. You're overwrought, that's all. Tired. You need a good night's rest. Things will be better in the morning. Darling, can't you understand? I don't want to be treated like a child. I don't want to be smothered. Well, I'm not smothering you, lovey. Try to help. I know, love. I know. Look, I, I tell you what. Now, why don't you have a bath? And I'll do you back. You haven't done that for a long time, have you? Now, look, I'm not going to have any more arguments, not one. Now, you leave everything to me. I'll make some cocoa, bring it up, and... Well, we, we'll see about the pill. I don't want I'll put one. put them by the bed with a glass of water. <laughs> if you're still tossing and turning at midnight, I'll hold your nose and push one down your throat, eh? <laughs> now, you go up and run your bath... Put in some bath salts. I'll join you later. OK? OK. Yes, all right, darling. Letter for you. Thanks. Well, eat up, love. It's past eight. Something interesting. Julie? It's from Muhammad Asif. Our mysterious Indian? Yes. Look. Very sorry to have taken the law into my own hands. Believe me, I know what's best. Seems I've heard that one before. The Ouija board is now burnt. I know that this will have made you curious. I'm willing to explain. Will you please telephone me and we can arrange a meeting? Yours sincerely, Mohammed Asif. Bayswater. <laughs> he comes from Bayswater. <laughs> Can't get much more prosaic than that. Well, do you think I should phone him? Too right I do. You remember those loose ends we discussed last night? Well, our Mr. Asif, mystic and fortune teller, is going to tie them up for us. Certainly you phone him. What, now? No. Give him a chance to have some breakfast. <laughs> phone him about nine or so, and then give me a ring.
I just called Asif, Danny. Good. What did he say? He wants to hold a séance. A séance? Yes. With all of us, you, me, Hugo, and Pat. What on earth for? He didn't say. Just said it was important. He said he'd explain everything there. Oh yes. Well, that's something at least. Uh, when? This evening. This evening. Short notice. Uh, look, listen. Are you doing anything for lunch? Nothing planned. Why? Well, look, come down to the grapes about one, um, and I'll get Hugo there as well. We can talk it over. But I can tell you his reaction right now. A séance? Us go to Bayswater and have a séance with this Asif? <laughs> well, you can go if you like. I'm not, and nor's Pat. What did I tell you? But Hugo, don't you think we ought to go? Why? Quite apart from it upsetting Pat, I'm not going to give up a whole evening while some quack sets us up as Patsies. No, he didn't look like a quack. Well, of course he didn't. A good con man never looks like a con he man. He never mentioned money. He doesn't have to, yet. Oh, look. The whole thing's so obvious, I'm surprised you didn't see through it, Max. It's a classic case of creating a need before selling the product. Two days ago, you never heard of Mr. Asif. You'd have laughed at the idea of going to Bayswater for a séance. But now, you're off there this evening, and you're trying to get Pat and me to come along as well. You're being taken for a ride. You're implying that Asif has arranged all this? Yes, in a way. You've walked right into his trap. Trap? Well, I'll tell you how he does it. He places the Ouija board in a junk shop. He waits until it's sold, gives the new owners a few days to polish it up and try using it, and then comes knocking at the door. Well, I expect it varies as to what happens next. He'd have to play it by ear. But he creates a great interest in himself and his profession. And from that to suggesting a séance at his place is but a short step. And along you go to be subjected to a show calculated to make you want more. But more will cost money. And you'll start paying. And paying through the nose. But Hugo, he can't train a Ouija board to give a bad prediction. But he doesn't have to. If you'd said... No, nothing happened. We tried it out. Then he'd say, "Thank Allah for that. Burn it, Mrs. Brown. Burn it before it's too late." No, I'm sorry, Hugo, but what you say doesn't hold water. You imply he runs it as a business. No business can pay fifty pounds per new customer. Four new customers, if all goes well. Well, even so, <sighs> I don't know if you know this, but Pat's father left her a bit. Well, not much, but mm, tidy nest egg. It wouldn't take long to find out about that and about John. If we go there tonight, I'll lay you even money. The first person he contacts is John. And if he does that, Pat will be caught hook, line, and sinker. He goes through her money like a dose of salts. It's Patty's after, not us. You two go if you like, but she stays out of it, and that's final. What's final, darling? Pat, what on earth? I you didn't did... mean to listen. You must have seen it there, oh, Jimmy. Yes, I did. You said nothing. Nothing. Uh, sit down, Pat. I'll get you a drink. Thank you. Well, what are you doing here? I mean... I ran your office. They said you were here so long I came. I was in town, just had my hair done. Oh, what would you like? Uh, dry sherry, please. No, I'll get it. How about a sandwich or something? No, thanks. Everyone else okay? Yes. Let me know. Well, what do you want to see me about? Sorry? When you rang, what do you want to see me about? Oh, well... As I was here getting my hair done, I thought we might meet for lunch or something. But we are, aren't we? What? What? What were you talking about? Hmm? Oh, nothing. You know, just gossip. <laughs> Julie, what were you talking about? I said nothing. Was it nothing, Julie? I um. Here we are. What were you talking about, Max? I've told her it was nothing. Nothing. We were discussing the next time you could come round for bridge, or we could come to you. Hugo thinks it wouldn't be a good idea to make it too soon. Not after last time. Isn't that right, Judy? I... I just thought we should give Bridge a rest, that's all. Why? Well, after last time, as Max said, after last time, well, I... I just think we should give it a rest, that's all. I... I want to know the truth. I've told you the truth. Please, I can tell you, see. Tell... Tell when you're concealing something from me, trying to protect me, smothering me. I can tell. Oh, lover, you're working yourself up into a state over nothing again. As Max said, we were talking about bridge. That's right, about bridge. Julie, what were you talking about? Please, tell me, please. I... Tell her, love, tell her the truth, that we were talking about bridge. She'll trust you. Yes, I'll believe you, Julie. Tell me the truth. We weren't talking about bridge. Oh, for Christ's sake. I'm sorry, Hugo. The Ouija board has gone. Uh, and Mr. Asif took it. Now, look, this has gone on long enough. I'm taking a... No, go on, Julie. Yes, go on, Julie. Look, you keep quiet. You've done enough damage. Now, come on, Pat. No. 
Come on, I said. No, look, can't we... Look, shut up. Darling, please, I must know now. Can't you see I'm that? I'm taking you home. We'll have to tell her everything, Hugo. You must see that now. Yes, we have to. A half-truth is worse than a whole truth. Well, look, if you... She did what she thought best. She may be right, I don't know, but the cat's out of the bag. Hugo, you've no alternative now. Tell her everything, darling, and then let Hugo say why he's against going to Bayswater this evening. Bayswater? I'm coming to that. Remember I mentioned to Mr. Asif... Well, I was talking to Max on the phone. You are, Pat. That's what it is. A confidence trick aimed right at you. I see. Well, thank you for being so honest. Max, what do you think? Is Hugo right? Well, I don't know. I think it might be likely. Julie? I don't know either. I'm sorry, I just don't know. Do you think we should go tonight? I think... I think Max and I should go, for the explanation, if nothing else. And me? That's up to you. I wouldn't advise it. Why not? If what Hugo says is true, then he is aiming at you, and he'll be quite ruthless to get you on the hook. It could be very upsetting. He could pretend to hear the spirit of your brother. Yes, I can see that. Julie, you're the only one of us who's actually met him. Do you think he's a charlatan? I don't know. He seemed very plausible, but then he would, wouldn't he? Look, the best thing is for Julie and me to go along and see what he says. There's no need for you two to get involved. We'll report back, and then we can all make up our minds. Yeah. And we can stay in the background, stay out of it. No, I, I think we must go, all of us, this evening. No, darling, I'm sorry, but it's out of the question. We have to go. Can't you see that? We have to go because he might be genuine, might be trying to help. The prediction... Oh, that was just someone fooling about. Well, we know that it wasn't. We all know that. We are threatened, darling, and this man might be trying to help. I know you might be right, and that it could be very unpleasant for me, for me but I'll be all right, you see? I'm quite calm, and, and now that I know what you all know, I'm, I'm quite calm. I think we'd better take your car, Max, it's bigger. We're not taking anybody's car. Max and Judah can go if they like, but not us, we're staying at home. You stay if you want to, darling, but I'm going. No! Yes! We haven't the babysitter. Sally will be glad to. She might be going out. Then I'll get someone else. What time did you say we'd be there, Julie? I said I'd phone him back. Right. Uh, Max, how long will it take to get there? Half an hour, three quarters. Well, if you tell him we'll be along about eight, Julie, and then you pick us up about seven, we'll have plenty of time. Can you make it back by seven, darling? Um, well, I, I, I might have to work late tonight. Well, that's up to you. I'll get to sit around just before seven. You'll phone me if you can't make it, won't you? Yes. Good. Well, that's settled then. Completely settled. He, 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 you, you will come, won't you, darling? You, you won't leave me? No. Of course I won't. Thank you. But I still say you'll be upsetting yourself to no good purpose. And if I get one indication that this asif is a charlatan, so help me, I'll strangle him. Ah, uh, good evening, Mrs. Brown. I am glad you could come. Good evening, Mr. Asif. Uh, this is my husband. Mr. Brown. Mr. Asif. Uh, Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Good evening. And Mr. Stevens. Mr. Stevens. Thank you all for coming at such short notice. Would you like to leave your coats here and come through? Thank you. <laughs> Doesn't all right for himself, if you ask me. Look, go easy, won't you, until we know what it's all about. I know what it's all about, all right. Through here. Would you like some refreshment? I can offer coffee or tea, maybe something stronger. No, thank you. Well, won't you all sit down? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> That's right. And you sit here? Good. Thank you. <coughs> now, I have much to explain, and we have a lot to do. Hold a seance, you mean? You do not believe in, for want of a better word, the supernatural, Mr. Stevens? No, I don't. Mrs. Stevens? I don't know. I think so, but I'm not sure. Mr. Brown? Well, I'm very dubious. And Mrs. Brown, I would say you were not sure either. No, I am not. It's always the same. Very few say they believe, a number scoff, and a majority are undecided. But no matter, no matter, all I require is an open mind this evening. Mm, I bet you do. Darling. Oh, if not an open mind, 
at least the willingness to listen. Look, about the Ouija board... Yes, I took it, stole it, if you like, because it had to be destroyed. It has now been burnt. Why? Because it is cursed, Mrs. Brown. Let me explain. I am an Indian. My family come from near Calcutta. For many, many generations, at least one male member has been gifted with psychic power, second sight, if you like, an ability to contact and learn from the spirit world. You must understand that words are not really adequate for describing this process and the forces involved. They must be experienced to be understood. The psychic gift that runs in my family made us venerated to a certain extent. The coming of the British Raj did not change that. Indeed, such was our renown that the British sometimes consulted us. And in particular, they consulted my father's grandfather, perhaps the greatest mystic our family has ever produced. His fame and knowledge were such that even viceroys would seek his advice. For not only was he supremely gifted, but also wise and did much to ease the tensions between the two cultures. He was a great man, a very great man. One day, a woman called to see him, a white woman, young, attractive, English. She had come out with her husband who was in the army. I don't know her name. I shall call her Mrs. Smith. <laughs> Sit down, Mrs. Smith, please. Thank you. You are worried. Yes. And, and frightened. You did right to come to me. Whom have you lost? My brother. I, I cannot believe that he's really gone. He, he, he died of malaria last month. And I... You need him? Yes. Badly. I, I need to feel that I can... I, I need his comfort. I will try for you, but it will be difficult. Malaria saps the spirit, and it may be too early yet to contact him, but I will try. He tried, but without success. Mrs. Smith, however, would not give up. One day, for they had grown close, she told him why. I adored Jonas. My brother, he was wild and reckless, loved horses. He was the finest horseman in the regiment. He introduced me to my husband. They were in the same regiment. But when they were posted out here, I followed more to be with my brother than my husband. My husband is not kind. He is cruel, jealous, violent. While Jonas lived, my husband was checked, but now I, I need Jonas to give me strength. I, I, I need him badly. I understand. You must reach Jonas for me. You must, if it's a question of money. No, no. It is more how to reach him. We have to push through the barrier that separates your brother from us. We have tried the normal methods. Now we must try something stronger more potent. I will build an Ouija board and dedicate it to Jonas. It will be useless for any other spirit. I will build it of the finest woods and with the greatest skill I have. Then he should come. And so my father's grandfather built the board. Just a moment. Did you say the brother's name was Jonas? Yes. J-O. We asked who was there, and the board spelt out J-O, it would have gone on. That would have been Jonas. What? After a hundred years or more? Get away. The board was dedicated to him. And for other reasons that will become apparent, it could not have been anyone else but him. I thought it might have been John. John? My brother. He was killed ten years ago. Pat, Mrs. Stevens knew before she was told it is. You did? You seem surprised. I am, but now is not the time to say why. Things must be explained in their proper order. 
I was telling you of the Ouija board. And how your great-grandfather, in a flash of inspiration, built it. It took several weeks. A board like that cannot be made without... How shall I put it? Without love. Without a concentration of thought. Without reverence. Also, the woods were not always easy to obtain, for the letters he used, mahogany and ebony from Africa. The base was of polished sandalwood, and the rim... Upas. Yes, Upas. One of the most poisonous woods in the world, found only in Java. And the lettering was in English, so this Jonas could read them, I suppose. You may scoff, but the spirit, when free, knows little more than when it is within our bodies. It can glimpse the future, perhaps, but otherwise it is much the same. Please, go on. Yes, of course, I am sorry. He completed the board, and with it tried to contact her dead brother. He succeeded, and Mrs. Smith was comforted. But not for long. Her husband had grown suspicious of her visits to the native quarter and set spies. Soon he knew where she went and what she was doing. He was a violent and jealous man. One evening he followed her to my great-grandfather's house, burst in when they were in contact with Jonas, and killed them both. He shot my forebear through the head and his wife through the heart. She fell across the board, breaking the glass they were using and staining the sandalwood with her blood. The stains remained. You may have noticed them under the polish. What happened next? There was an inquiry, of course, but her husband claimed that Mrs. Smith and my father's grandfather had been lovers and was acquitted. We believe that he paid his spy handsomely to say what he wanted him to say. But the important thing, as far as we are concerned, was that in breaking the glass, Mrs. Smith had trapped Jonas's spirit in the board, bound there by the upas round the edge and the blood on top. Why didn't you slip out of the bottom? Darling, please. Oh, come off it, love. You don't believe any of this rubbish, do you? I... Allow me... Human blood is very symbolic. A sister's blood, even more so. Jonas was unable to depart. And in his imprisonment, he took on the poisonous aspects of the upas. I'm sorry, I don't understand. And Ouija board is something like a gilded cage. The upas forms the bars, the sandalwood, sweet-smelling, gentle kind, the gilding. A spirit can be happy there, providing it is released in time by the mystic who summoned it forth. That mystic was now slain, and the sandalwood seeped in a murdered sister's blood. The gilded cage had turned into a torture chamber, and there was no escape. The board was cursed. Whenever it was used by someone with psychic power, Jonas could reach out into the material world and give vent to his anger, his frustration, his malevolence. He gave predictions of illness, accident, death. And did they come true? Yes, inevitably. <laughs> ah! Oh, God! What is it? What's wrong? She's fainted. Get some water, someone. Some water, for Christ's sake. Allow me. Get her outside, some fresh air. Are you all right, love? Hold her head up. Come on, Pat, I'm taking you home. No, no. Uh, here. What's that? Brandy. Give it to me. Here, Pat, sip this. Make you feel better. Come mm. on, love. When she's better, I'm going to put her in the car, and then I'm going to come back and wring your blasted neck. You go control yourself. Control myself? Do you realise what this bastard's done to my wife? I did nothing but tell the truth. Nothing but a bloody tissue of lies, you mean. For God's sake. I'm going to wring his bloody neck. I don't care who in hell tries to stop you go, me. You go, Pat wants you. Look, you're all right, darling. Yes. I'm taking you out to the car. Can you walk? But, uh, all right, I'll carry you. Now, put your arms around my neck. No, darling, no, I'm not leaving. Yes, you are. Get her out of the car, Julie, and stay there. You too, Max. Not me. It's not your wife he's got at. Not your wife. It's Calm mine. down, Hugo. Calm down, for God's sake. Do you remember ten years ago... Well, look at her now. Oh, all right, darling. Don't do anything. Please, please. It'd serve no purpose if you went for him now. You'd only upset her more. You're sure you're all right? Yes, darling, I'm OK. It was just a shock, that's all. I've been a bit tense. 
bit tense. Anyway, we're going right now. One moment. Out of my way. You go. Please, darling, please. There are still some things that have to be explained. They will perhaps help your wife. Certainly they should not upset her more. Go on. First, I must apologise. I did not realise, Mrs. Stevens, that you could be so affected. And you call yourself a mystic? I could have known had I been concentrating on her. But I was far more interested in you, Mr. Stevens. Oh, well, of course you're bloody well aware. I was the one you had to win over. The others were already half convinced before they came. No, it was not for that reason. I was interested because you are like me, gifted. You also have psychic power, Mr. Stevens, and of a very high order. Well, that, that's ridiculous. No. It is very often those that have the power, but do not realise it, who scoff the loudest. They are frightened of what they sense inside themselves and try to mask this fear by derision. Oh, Oh, for God's sake. It's not me. I'm not... No. But, John, my brother, I knew... You were close to him. Very close. Then it was probably a last desperate appeal from him to you. Because you received it, it does not mean that your power is anything out of the ordinary. Your husband, however, is on a different plane altogether. Am I? Then how come I didn't pick up any of his final outbursts? I was no more than three yards away from her at the time. A matter of direction, of concentration. But you might well have received some of it and been unaware. Tell me, were you married at the time? No, but... A matter of attraction. Would you say your husband paid you more attention after your brother's death than before? Yes, but In I... fact, would you not say that your relationship really started at that point. Yes, yes, it did. He would have been attracted to you because your psychic power was temporarily heightened. He would not have been able to help himself. There were other reasons. It was... Oh, for God's sake, this is too much. I am sorry. I may have stumbled on an exposed nerve. But I assure you this was inadvertent on my part. Mr. Ass, if there are several questions, I would like answered. Some points are not clear. I would be glad to help. But first, please, won't you all sit down? Darling, sit down, please. Are you yes. sure you're all right? Yes, really, I'm OK. Sit down, please. Oh, very well. Now, Mr. Brown. Well, first, you say a spirit knows no more after death than before. Apart from an ability to glimpse the future. Well, then, how can a malignant spirit, such as you say was in the board... Make predictions come true? I don't know. There are many things we do not know. But I should say that as the spirit grows in hate or is changed by peculiar circumstances, then it eventually reaches the stage when it is powerful enough to reach out and touch the material world. Also, the longer a spirit is in contact with our world, the stronger it gets. Jonas has been in continuous contact now for over a hundred years through the board. The prediction he gave for us? Will it come true? I am not sure. I hope not. I hope that by burning the board, I have released him and thus reduced his power or made him benign. It is to establish this a seance must be held. Seance? Bloody seance. Mr. Stevens, I know this is difficult for you. Difficult? It's bloody impossible. Can't you see what he's doing? He's nudging us into a position of acceptance of him and his powers. Before you know where you are, money will be mentioned and the hat will be passed round. So that is what you are afraid of, that I am a shyster. Mr. Stevens, my great-grandfather made that board, and it has brought you four people great worry and placed you under a threat. It is my responsibility to help. I do not want, and I do not need your money. Yes. Well, that's another thing I can't understand. How did we get hold of the Ouija board? Yes. If it's so precious and dangerous, how come it ended up in a junk shop? A mistake. I was born and brought up in India and followed my calling there under my father. He told me of the Ouija board and made me a promise never to use it except in revenge. The spirit could be controlled by an adept. 
I have never been certain enough of my powers to attempt this. When my father died, I came here, and the board came with me. I've been here 20 years now. All that time, it remained in my box room, half forgotten. Two weeks ago, my daughter asked me if she could clear out the box room, as if a friend was joining her from university. I said yes. It was only later that I remembered the board and started to trace it. It took eight days, days of great worry. When I saw it again, polished and clean and deadly, I knew it had to be destroyed. I took it, came here, wrote the letter to you, and then burnt the board in that fireplace. I built a pyre and ritualistically burnt it. It will be, I hope, enough. But now we must hold a seance and find out if I succeeded. Well, why hold a seance? Why well, not just go into a trance and ask the empty air? You are the one who called him forth, Mr. Stevens. You are the one to do that. If you were skilled enough, you could talk to him at this moment. But as you are not, we must link minds. In other words, hold a seance. Then we will find out what he wants. And if necessary, reason with him. It gets worse and worse. He's going to do some rigmarole of pleading with a spirit to stop one of us dying this week. Well, can't you see he's a phony? All that rubbish about him forgetting the ball was there and his daughter clearing it away and selling it. Where is this daughter? Have you a daughter? Can't we see her? She is now back at university. Oh, how very convenient. The reason she came down was her mother's death. My wife died a fortnight ago, Mr. Stevens. I am still in mourning. I am used to having my calling derided. But do not count on my good humour for much longer. I am sincerely trying to help. I need no money, only cooperation. Particularly yours, Mr. Stevens. For it is only with your power I will be able to lift the curse from you, if it is still there. From me? Of course. He would have to work through you. You are now his contact with this world. He would work through you to achieve his ends. Please, Mr. Stevens, accept, just for this evening, everything I have told you as true. Afterwards, call me what you will. But for the space of a few minutes, accept. What do you want us to do? Nothing. We're doing nothing. Please, darling, please. M Max, I think you should. He destroys his whole case if he asks for money now. Anyway, I've never attended a seance before. I thought I'd die first. I, I think you must. Well, for Pat's sake, you must. All right, Mr. Asif. The floor is yours. Thank you. Now, will you please draw up your chairs so that we can all link hands? And, Mr. Stevens, if you could sit opposite me, please, so we face each other. What, no special table? No candles? No mood music? No lowering of the lights? Those things are merely trimmings to impress the credulous, nothing more. With both Mr. Stevens and myself here, we have power and to spare. Now, are you all comfortable? Then we'll begin. Clasp hands. Lean back. Relax. Close your eyes. Think of nothing. Breathe evenly. Deeply. Think of nothing but my voice. Imagine nothing but a total blackness. See nothing but a total blackness. Feel nothing but a total blackness. It grows. The blackness grows. And your mind sinks back, feels tired, drops back and back, down and down into a black, deep pit. And you relax, back and back, further and further. Mr. Stevens, do not resist. Sink back with us. 
back, back, further and further, and let Jonas in. Open your mind, Mr. Stevens, and let Jonas in. Let him in. Let him flood into you. Allow him entry. Let Jonas in. Let him in. 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 Are you there? Are you there? Yes, I am here, Jonas. Yes, I am Jonas, and I know why you have called. You are released from your torment. Torment? I do not understand you, little man. What torment? When I burnt the board, you released me, and now I am free. Free? I know. That is what I intended, but... But what? That I do not sound grateful. I am grateful, little man, for now I can live out my life. Mr. Stevens, help! He has gone mad! Not mad, but lustful. I have so seldom escaped, but now I am free. I was bound to that board, couldn't escape. But now I am free! Mr. Stevens, drive him out! Wake up and drive him out to where? How? I've spent a day settling in. I've spent a day settling in, writhing inside his mind like a serpent. He did not know I was there, but I nudged him gently. Nudged him here. Nudged him into accepting this seance. Nudged him into relaxing the grip on his mind. And now... I am nudging him into his death. All of you, link minds and drive this abomination out. <laughs> A failing mystic and three incompetent people drive me out. You get above yourself, little man. Fight him, Mr. Stevens. Fight him. Hear me. Out, out. Oh, you are late. Far, far too late. He is dead. Oh, no. He is bluffing, Mrs. Stevens. Do not break the circle. Join me. Out, 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 out. I will help. Out, out, out. 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 You cannot out. do it. You out. cannot do it. Out, out, out. Help us, out. Max. Out, out. out. Here, darling, drink this. There you are, love. What what happened? You fainted. <coughs> it would have been surprising had you done otherwise. Jonas tried to take you over. Take, take me over. He had gone mad. Oh, it was horrible. I should have guessed, perhaps. But when I burnt the board, I released him as I intended. But he did not become grateful. He took the chance to try and take you over. He already had access to your mind. 
but he needed you to voluntarily ease your grip and I should never have insisted on a seance if you hadn't driven him out tell me what can you remember well, no, nothing really and I, I I was thinking it was all a bit stupid I was sitting in a circle holding hands with you trying to hypnotize us or something. Then I... I remember thinking, oh, well, what the hell? And trying to relax my mind and... Well, it was easy. Almost too easy. I remember nothing more. Except a kind of growing excitement and, and, and pressure and yelling and crying and... Nothing. What happened? We drove him out. Or rather, you drove him out. He had forced you right back. I was laughing about it. Was it was terrifying, wasn't it, darling? Yes, it was. I thought maybe he had won. But then you recoiled and forced him out. Well, where to? I am not sure. It is possible he no longer exists. Well, if he does exist, then... Could he take... Mr. Stevens over again? No. He was only susceptible because he had the power, but was unaware of it. Now he will be ever on his guard. Even if he doesn't believe, even if he explains away the whole thing as some sort of chicanery on my part, as he probably will, his mind will remember, set up defences. The curse has been lifted from you. I thank you. I can now retire with an easy mind. You're retired? Yes, I have felt for some time now that my power was waning and this confirmed it. Also... Go on. Your husband is safe and so are you, all of you. But if Jonas still exists, then he might turn his attention to me. I don't wish to give him an entry by practicing my calling again. As you have seen, a mind is very vulnerable when in a trance. You would be well advised never to attend another seance, Mr. Stevens. Don't worry. I have no intention of doing so. None at all. Mr. Asif, we thank you. We all thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for the evening, Julie. Thank you. Bye. Oh, quite a successful evening. We had some good hands. Yes. <laughs> it's funny to think a couple of months ago we did exactly the same thing and ended up in Bayswater at a seance. Yes, I know. <laughs> oh, it's cold. Let's go in. Nightcap? Oh, just a small one. That looks fine. Oh, I thought she looked a bit tired. A bit tired, yes, but otherwise fine. Yes. Here. Oh, thanks. Was well, strange, wasn't it? I'll say. My trouble is that I can't stop my mind wondering, speculating. Even after all this time, I still come up with new angles. Such as? Well, let's take as a premise that it was all genuine, that Jonas, a malignant spirit from the past, tried to take Hugo over. Oh, but we've been over this again yes, and again. Wait a minute, love. I mean, how do we know that Jonas didn't succeed in taking Hugo over? What? Let's look at things from the other angle for a while. Let's assume that we didn't drive Jonas out. Let's assume that the Hugo we know got pushed out somehow and Jonas took over. Now... The last thing he's going to say is, ha, ha, you failed, I'm Jonas, ha, ha. No, he's going to go right on being Hugo. I don't understand. Well, it's simple. If Jonas has taken Hugo over, he'll have all of Hugo's mind to play with, all his memories, response patterns, skills, everything. If he doesn't want to be found out, as he won't be, he's got the perfect camouflage. He behaves like Hugo, he reacts like Hugo, he is Hugo. But not really. Really, it's Jonas. You're joking. 
No, I'm just speculating. When you come to think about it, Jonas could have got into any one of us. You, me, Pat, Hugo, Asif. We'd never know. I could be Jonas. Oh, stop it. Jonas was evil. There'd the, the be changes. Yes, but not right away. He won't show his hand right away. It'd be the small things that change, the small, almost imperceptible things. Things you could explain away by saying you're getting old or under a strain. He'd be very careful not to be found out, very careful. He'd throw up smoke screens like, like at the seance. At the seance? Or a better way of making us all think he'd been beaten. It was very dramatic and very effective. It wasn't until I started mulling it over a few days ago I realised that if I were Jonas, I would have done exactly the same, or slipped quietly into someone else's mind. Mind, for example. What I'm saying now could be no more than an elaborate double bluff, in case you thought of it first. Had you, by the way? No. Oh, God, darling, you've almost got me worried now. Sorry. I'm just playing with ideas. That's all. Just playing with ideas. Pleasant evening. Yeah. They had all the luck, though. I thought you didn't believe in luck. Perhaps I've changed my mind. Uh, I'll be glad to get to bed. Mm, yes, so will I. Have a hard day tomorrow. One day I'm going to chuck everything, sell up and get the hell out. Start a new life again. Again? Well, just a figure of speech, that's all. Oh, darling. Do you have to drive so fast, darling? You know it makes me nervous. Oh, sorry. But I enjoy it. So much more exciting than horses. What? Oh, nothing, darling, nothing. Everything's under control, everything's under control. <laughs> Everything. Jonas was written for radio by J.C.W. Brook. Prunella Scales and John Rye were Pat and Hugo Stevens. Anna Cropper and Julian Holloway were Julie and Max Brown. And David March was Mohammed Asif. Carol Boyd played the telephonist. The play was produced by Ian Cotterell. <laughs>